Hello, hello, and we are live yet again. This is my bookish chat of the week. And so, as always, for my chats, I'm going to keep my eye out for my co host and see if I can get her on in a moment. But I hope everybody's evening is going well. I had some fun news this week pertaining to uh, something that pertains to my books, at least. <laughs> and we may get to that in a little bit, but. Yeah, just keep my eye out for my co-host, but let me know in the meantime what you're reading, how you're doing, where in the world you live. Let's get to know each other for a moment as I keep my eye out <laughs> for my co-host. <laughs> I'm dealing with, ah, oh, there we go, some allergies, so I may apologize for that in advance, but let's see. Ah, oh, here we go. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. I love, I have to say, I love your book display behind you. If I had a cute book display, <laughs> that would be ideal. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this is where I always film in front of. <laughs> so I, love like... I love it. And um, <laughs> in case you've never seen any of my lives, we just keep it pretty casual. It's We just talk about books, what you like, what you enjoy reading, and all the fun stuff in between. And since I'm an author, I can always chime in on the author side of things. But <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> that's awesome. So let me know, what are you reading out right now? Because that is a nice thing I like to start off with, with people. <laughs> Actually, literally right before I got on, my dog decided to take a <gasps> no! book. This book, which I'm reading, The Jasmine Throne. I just started reading it yesterday. <laughs> and who's the author? I don't recognize that title, but I'm also very bad with concurrent. Okay, got it. Yeah, it's pretty good so far. Um, I'm just very upset at my dog. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, maybe your dog has good taste if it chose the book <laughs> maybe but yeah so um so what are your favorite genres since i'm an epic fantasy author that's kind of when i read concurrent stuff i usually jump towards the epic fantasy side of things but i'm always love trying to challenge myself to read outside my typical genre so i don't know what are your favorite genres to read at the moment well i would say i'm the same i love epic fantasy but i'll I'll read pretty much anything like I do like to jump around um anything like epic fantasy young adult fantasy fantasy romance um if it's got fantasy in it I'll read it <laughs> <laughs> I got I got it I got it yeah like right now I'm trying to hit some of the more I guess classic fantasy in some ways um I'm about to broach the witcher and then go back to wheel of time so I, gu I guess that's at this point classic fantasy I don't know when does it become classic <laughs> I actually read Wheel of Time last year for the first time, and I really enjoyed it, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm about to start the fourth book at the moment, so a little way into it, but I always do these roundabout ways where I'll pick up a book from one series, read it, then I'll pick up another book from a series and read a standalone, and like five books later, come back <laughs> and yeah. do the spiral, rather than reading straight through like a normal person. <laughs> Yeah, no, I definitely, with Wheel of Time, you got to take breaks because it's so long. <laughs> it is, it is. And, but I mean, it is long, but not as dense as something like Tolkien. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I feel like Wheel of Time almost like, I feel like even as the series goes on, it feels less like classic fantasy and more yeah. modern but it's kind of like a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think that's one of the early, no, I guess that's not true. Um, since one of my series is Portal Fantasy, and that's a term I learned relatively recently, like last year. And so when I was reading the first, I don't know if it's the second book or the third book of Wheel of Time, they go through that part where you find out it is kind of a Portal Fantasy in some ways. And I was just like, oh, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> so, um, so let me ask. Um, so, within the, all the fantasy brackets, what was what book got you into reading in the first place? Or can you remember that far back? You were always like, I've always been drawn to it. Or was there a book that made you fall in love as an adult? Because a lot of people drift away because they're forced to read, and then they come back to it as an adult. I'm also gonna take my jacket off. It's got a little warm in here. <laughs> oh, so for me, I was definitely like an reader like all of like elementary school and middle school I was like obsessed with like Lord of the Rings Chronicles of Narnia yeah. um the Aragon series was also a big one that I like loved as a kid so that was 
big for me. And then, of course, like, I feel like in high school and in college, like, because you're forced to read so much, you kind of away from it. I still feel like I read some, like, of, like, the more famous, like, young adult fantasy books from that time. Mm -hmm. Read the Throne of Glass and Akatar series, like, as they were coming out. So that was, like, not new to me when I joined Book Talk. Um, Yeah, yeah. Books of Crows was actually the first one from Book Talk that I picked back up in 2020 in the pandemic, and that like was what got me back into reading. And now it's like I read all the time. So, <laughs> because yeah. the, I mean, there there are there are a variety of hobbies out there, and reading is a good one. <laughs> you get to be transported to new worlds. So I love that. But yeah, for me, I have to admit, I'll have to start over with Aragon because when it came out the first time years ago, like I was totally into it. I was like. Um, Paolini was like right at my age at that point and I was just like this is so cool it's about dragons and it's a young writer and I wanted to become an author and um, he was homeschooled and I was homeschooled and I was like this is awesome and then, <laughs> and then college hit and I read the first two books had the third one but never got back to it because college hit mm-hmm, yeah. and then it's been so long I need to go back I think because I, I've heard rumors that they're turning that into either a new movie or a series thank goodness yeah. <laughs> Disney plus I think there's gonna be like a Disney plus show which I'm really excited for because that movie that they made back in the day was awful so <laughs> we don't talk about that movie <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno you know there are certain things <laughs> yeah but yeah no I, I was gonna say I, I love the Paolini's um, in the sense that he was a young writer. Now, as an adult, going back to it, I'm curious how I will feel about it now. Like, will I think it is as good? Or going back to it, will I be like, I've read better? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't reread the series at all. I definitely want to, because I, I think I would still really enjoy it now. And I've heard some people um, say they still really liked it as an adult. So <laughs> I think yeah. still. But yeah, it might be one of those things where you know, I've read a lot more now, so it doesn't ha- hold the same appeal. Yeah, I understand. I understand. I mean, when I was back then, way back then, uh, first book back then, I was like crushing on him so hard just because of just everything. <laughs> and and I remember seeing him like on like being interviewed on like the Today Show and all this kind of stuff. And so I wrote a uh, fan letter to him and have his response letter to date. And I think it's wedged into that first book, <laughs> Aragon. And so it's one of those, I really owe it to him to finish that series. He wrote back to me in a time before you got to do these kind of social medias and be, (laughs) you know, it was easier to respond to your fans at the time. So, whoops. But so let me ask, um, are you a, you reread regular, reread, reread, I'm going to tie my myself, see, Uh, regularly? Because I know some people are like, I read it once, put it on the shelf and that's done. I, I wouldn't say regularly. There have been like a few series that I've like picked back up again and I kind of want to do more of it because it is like so fun. Like I reread The Hunger Games um, last year for like the first time since like, third and mm-hmm. that was like still so good. And like, I feel like you notice more things about it like as an, ad- an adult than I did like when I was a kid. Um, let's see, I've reread the Akatar series just because that's like a comforting, easy read. And I've reread that. That's another. (laughs) And um, let's see. Hello, hello. I'm sorry. I'm seeing people chime in. I was just like zoned into you. I was just like, hello, everyone. (laughs) Welcome. But yeah, let me know if anybody's listening. If you have reread a series, what series have you reread? But in the meantime, yeah, I'm have a bad habit of reading a book, putting it down, and I think it's because I am a slow reader. And there are always more books to read that it's really hard for me to go back. There are a few that I've gone back to um, for whatever reason, but it's it's not common. It's not common yet. I never want to give up a book that I enjoyed once because I love them. They're pretty. Stay on my shelf. <laughs> I'm not bad about getting rid of books. I never want to, even if it was like a three star read. I'm like, I'm, I, I read it, so it deserves its spot. <laughs> invested in it your time your money your energy and you know it's going to stay with you forever no, i get that i get that <laughs> yeah yeah um so- i yeah i have not read some of the famous book talk book series here akatar and all that kind of stuff throne of glass i have i have the first book of throne of glass finally on my physical tbr that i will grab soon list but i have yet to get to it 
Yeah, I don't know why. I'm stalling. <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's like, I think a lot of people, it's funny because like that was kind of like the first book for a lot of people. But now people are like finding like they're more like specific genres now that they mm-hmm. like. A lot of people have gone, yeah, more into like adult epic fantasy. Other people have gone to fantasy romance. And it's very interesting to see like the divide because I feel like everyone started kind of with young adult and now it's kind of like verged off into different categories. Yeah, because when I jumped on to, uh, this platform, Book Talk, I don't know if I'm allowed to TikTok, Book Talk. Anywho, um, it's been a year and a half ago, maybe a little maybe a little longer than that. So I'm still new to it, and I jumped on late in the Book Talk game. But yeah, it was just such a fascinating thing of the power of this platform and mm-hmm. how people, readers of all sorts, are able to boost books like no other ways as an author that is so fascinating to me because indie authors used to just be categorized lumped over there and never have a chance to like see yourself on some bigger you know media and then this has come along and has changed lives and it's really cool yeah no it's I, awesome definitely discovered it, a lot of really good indie authors through book talk that like mm-hmm. I probably found otherwise <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's probably my favorite. No offense to the other social platforms. It is probably my favorite social platform. But there's so many different ways to engage like this, you know, with other people and meeting, you know, other readers and book people. And I love it. And I see a comment that popped up and said, uh, I guess referring to the fact of I was asking, have you read a book series more than once? And the answer is, yes, uh, The Black Company. And I'm going to butcher some of these names. I'm sorry. The Malaysian Book of the Fallen. That's a cool name. Rainbow Six and The Great Gatsby. The only one I've read of that is The Great Gatsby. Have you yeah, read I any of those? Read any of those? <laughs> Good. Yeah, I read. I got into The Great Gatsby, and it's weird because I'm not really into American literature, like the stuff that you're forced to read when you're going through school. But for whatever reason, I think it's because one of the twenties vibe, and I love everything twenties. <laughs> the Great Gatsby is just so fascinating. And then the movie came out, and I was just in love with the movie. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've not, I haven't actually seen the movie or read the book. I, I feel like I should at least watch the movie. I think I'd probably enjoy it. Because, I mean, I love, like, Downton Abbey and stuff like that. That's, like... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this one, the, the movie's fun because it's modern music put to a period story, which makes it entertaining as well. And, of course, everybody's over the top on how they celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> so, ooh. I have another pop-up comment says, I read, uh, read the whole Book of the Fallen series, never understood it, just all over the place. I don't know anything about that series. I don't really either. Book of the Fallen, I don't think I've heard of it. So, so where do you find your books? Is it through platform, is it like through here now, or do you just find a Google search, or where do you find books to read? Recommendations? (laughs) Like, people I follow's recommendations and like friends I've made on this app I've gotten to know some people who I know have like super similar tastes so if I see them reading something and they really like it that'll like make me way more likely to want to pick it up for sure I love it I love it yeah I I love watching people's reviews and how people review books on this platform and if you haven't read a review anybody please review a book just one book do it for an author somewhere do it for the author <laughs> We all need it. It is, it is valuable. But um, but yeah, no, I. it is kind of neat seeing people and how people review books. Some people are, you know, very minimalistic and others go super in depth, almost to the point of spoilers, which I, ne- I hate spoilers. Don't ever give me a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> or at least there needs to be a warning ahead of time. I have well for me like scrolling and that's always like not fun. You're like, I mean, it. For me, it doesn't, like, I'm not going to, like, not read a book because I see a spoiler, but it's, like, you know, not as fun if there's, like, a big reveal or something and then it gets spoiled. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I know on the on the author side of things, it's, like, I want to talk about, you know, it's really just... get into talking about my own work, but I never want to spoil it for anybody else. And it's just, like, trying to, like, is this going to be qualified as a spoiler? Is this big enough? Or, you know, is this enough of a twist that I don't want to give it away? And, you know, it's, that, it's kind of a but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fun and complex thing. You, like draw people in with like a certain storyline that happens but you're like I don't yeah that's true I never thought about that from like an author perspective. how do you pitch your book <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would be a fun challenge for writers now, not writers readers to do is if you read a book how would you pitch it in four lines 
in your own words and just see what people say. Just whatever it is, your favorite book or something and be like, just curious, how would you pitch it? Though it's always fun to see people trying to pitch a book and it's like the, the what, is, what do they call it? The worst ways to pitch a book. Like you describe something so off the wall, but it still applies, but it's like just a wild way to describe the book. I don't know. I don't know if you've heard any of those. <laughs> Hello, Derek. How are you? See more people chiming in. How do you get your book reviewed on Book Talk? Oh, that's a question. There you go. So, do you have an answer? How do you get your book reviewed on Book Talk? And then I'll answer it from an author's perspective. I mean, I mean, I've had like authors reach out and like ask me to like read their books before and like, you know, like they'll offer me like a advanced reader copy or something mm -hmm. like that. I think just like I would make sure, sure. that like reaching out to is like someone who reads that genre because I've gotten some mm -hmm. really authors where it's like I don't read like a lot of mafia romance so I'm probably not gonna enjoy this very much <laughs> you know but so I would like do the research on the reviewer have them review it or I mean you can make your own videos that would but I don't know I'm not an author so <laughs> she, you'd probably have a way better perspective um I know as an author you know well in just in general re people who read and review will sometimes post um you know, follow a variety of people in the book talk community. And some people who are on the reader reviewer side of things will make a post saying, Hey, you know, send me recommendations. I'm ready for reviews. And you can try to, you know, pitch, pitch your book that way. Um, for me, I, I have not made a big effort to get reviewed with people on this platform. I find arc readers. I mean, I have like a general, you know, sign up and I'll mention stuff myself. I'm like, Hey, arcs are open. Come sign up. This is the next book that we're going to be dealing with and a little bit, bit about that. And people can find me that way, but I don't usually go out and reach. I think it's because ever since um, Girl Scouts, I hate selling things. I really do. So it's like knocking on doors and being like, buy the cookie, which everybody wanted the cookie, but I didn't want to sell it. <laughs> so I don't want to ask. And I know that's, you should probably, the asking is not a bad thing, but I'm the person who's just like, you can come to me. I, I don't <laughs> Better way to do it and then like you get people who you know are interested mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I know on other platforms if you are on things like Facebook switching social media um, <laughs> there are groups that are arc groups where if you are a person who's trying to pitch a book you can post it there and you'll can get some people to sign up um, just check the rules on all those groups because you always want, always want to play by the rules whatever they are <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for me, um, I wish I could be an ARC reader or a reviewer, but I just don't have the time between reading my book a thousand and two times. Yeah. And then maybe having a little few minutes in the morning and evening to pick up another book to just read for pleasure. I just don't have time. I feel yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I, when I first kind of like started making videos, I got like ARC requests and I was super excited about them. Like, oh, wow, someone wants me to read their book. And I like accepted way too many and now I'm like way more selective about like okay I am only going to like ask for arcs if I like have the time and it's something I really really want to read because mm -hmm. just... sorry about my dog he's in this crate because he was bad for eating my book <laughs> well you know I understand I I would be upset too I would be yeah. upset too I I don't know. I've never had that happen yet. It will happen. I'm a pet, I'm an animal person. It will yeah. happen one day. And it'll probably be my like the favorite book or some kind of signed copy. And I'll be like, I kept it up on the top shelf. How did you find it? And I don't know. But that's that would be my luck. <laughs> I don't know. I've never had him do anything like that before. I did leave it on the ground, though, because I knew I was going to be sitting here. So I had it like ready. And he just was like, oh, for me. <laughs> <laughs> we want your attention he wants your attention yeah, yeah that's what i i've seen people on again switching social media on instagram do the the dog and book posts which are really cute where you have your dog and then whatever book you're reviewing as the the image and again as a pet porch pet person as well i'm just like tell me more about both the dog and the book <laughs> yeah i, I love it I'm like really bad at my bookstagram though. I don't post on there very often. I feel oh like I a lot more because you can be more just like whatever. Whereas Instagram, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is definitely about the looks and the beauty shots. And as an author, there's so only so many beauty shots I can do with the same books. And so 
mine's a little all over the board because I repurpose content from like, if I'm interviewing another author, I put that, I share that there, or, um, you know, if I'm having, you know, some kind of special talk or whatever, but it's like all over the board. It doesn't have the nice look that, you know, a true bookstagrammer has. And I just, it's not one that I'm comfortable with. <laughs> I wish it was better. It's hard. <laughs> so let me ask, cause I see one of these, uh, a lot of chatter here and I'm trying to catch up with everything, but I do see a comment talking about online book clubs for reviews. That's a great option. And like, are you in a book club or have you ever been in a book club yourself? I am not actually. I like, I do like usually like buddy reads with like, specific people we'll like, you know, choose to read a book together and like share our thoughts, but I've not been in like an actual book club. I think it would be fun though. I, I would definitely be down to try that. <laughs> If I had more time, it would be fun. But again, since this, I'm a slow reader, I think I would probably get like stressed about the fact that I have to finish this book in so many days and I'll be like, I'm not ready. <laughs> this is back in school again, the pressure's on. But I like the idea of having a group together to be able to discuss something that hopefully you've enjoyed. If you don't enjoy, you know, you can complain together. I don't know. But you know, that sounds cool. I just reading at a certain time schedule. This is why I stopped doing the Goodreads book challenge where it's like you sign the amount of books you're trying to read. I got to the point where I was just like stressing out about it too much. I was like, this is not fun. <laughs> at the end of the year, I'm just like, must read. What are the shortest books possible? Just so I can get my numbers up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you keep track of your books that you read? I know a lot of people do use stuff like Goodreads as a way to keep track of the hundreds of books some people consume. <laughs> no, I definitely, I use Goodreads and I just started using Storygraph too in January. Because it shows you your stats. It's not as user-friendly as Goodreads in terms of like the layout, but it does have more like info. And I really like looking at that info, like shows you like how much like of certain genres or authors. I think that's, that's cool. cool. And what is that called? I'm not familiar with this platform. Oh, story graph. Yeah, it's just like, it's basically Goodreads. It's very similar, but it like has some different stuff on there. <laughs> but I'm still kind of a newbie to it. Hmm. Things to think about in the future. I'll have to remember story graph because, yes, it's always nice to find new ways to spread the word <laughs> as an indie person about books that I have. Hmm, I don't know that one. I'll have to look that, into that one. That's kind of cool. Oh, I have a... Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. I said your books are probably on there because it's really easy to like add books on there too if they're not. <laughs> cool. I'll have to go see what people think about them. Ah! So, no, actually, I'm okay oh. with reviews. I, I'm okay. <laughs> and I see, uh, let me see, Nerdy Girl Books says, um, uh, love being an ARC reader. So there is someone right there. Nice, yeah. ARC reader is great. And uh, same person said, had a rabbit eat a book of mine <laughs> once cries. Oh, a rabbit, wow. <laughs> Honestly, that kind of makes sense. Rabbits like to chew things. <laughs> it's true, yeah. I haven't had a rabbit in a long time, but I've also never ha put my rabbits with my books. <laughs> Probably for the best. They're like they're like the natural shredder. <laughs> yeah, I know. Document shredder. I got to him before he could do more damage it's just like the cover so it's not like I won't be able to read the book it still just annoys me it doesn't look as aesthetic now <laughs> you know and like that's the thing is people there are people who buy the book just purely if you have amazing covers hopefully you're buying it because you enjoy it as well but there are some really pretty covers out there that yeah I definitely get the cover and you know <laughs> hopefully I like the book <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 but then you know the, for the people like you who have those beautiful displays behind them when you have those gorgeous covers you can show them off too yeah at least it's like going to something <laughs> i have a uh, another comment here's another animal ate my books but it was an african gray parrot <laughs> oh wow that's unique <laughs> <laughs> that's actually pretty funny i'm sorry about the book though i am really sorry r.i.p yeah. book <laughs> But yeah, so, but yeah, if you're looking for ARC readers out there, just, you know, never be ashamed to ask. I'm just like, I think it's part laziness, part I just don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what that would be like. I'm sure it would be a little intimidating. Though, though, if people want to sign up for ARCs for my books, I have two, well, 
Actually, I do. I have the third book of my Portal Fantasy I'm about to um, send out in another week or so. So, um, and signups are on my Link's League. Talking about that. You saw it. See, I'm so bad. I'm like, I literally am supposed to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Sign up. Readers of all kinds. Oh my, I see. I'm not good at this. I need, I want, I would love to make it as good as possible. Well, I want to do well enough. There we go. This is the way I'm going to word it. I want to do well enough where I can have someone help me market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you're not reading, what are some of your hobbies or what do you do? Because I actually don't know this one. I don't think I know this one. I have a lot of other hobbies. I mean, I have my dog who, he's a German Shepherd. I could bring him up. A lot of exercise. So I do mm -hmm. like a lot of walks with him um i mean reading is like my main hobby if you see my page you know i read a lot of <laughs> that's like the main thing i do i also like to like knit and crochet sometimes it's like a little fun relaxing thing and you know there, just there are a number of people who um my sister actually really loves knitting and um last week i actually talked with another book talker whose hobby was crocheting so you know it's because I feel like there you go. That's there's a that is a book club waiting to happen where you talk about books and you either knit or crochet or there's another one I think out there that I don't know. Cross stitch maybe? I don't know. But you create your beautiful pieces while you're talking about fantastic works you read. I feel like there's something there. I'm oh. not gonna found it because I don't do any of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Um Oh, question popped up. It says, do you judge a book by the cover, the back, the little short blurb, or just by some random page within it? How do you decide to buy a book? I mean, I definitely judge by the cover for sure. Um, I especially, I don't really read the back unless like I've like never heard of the book before, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. like, I feel like most of the time, one thing that I feel like BookTok has kind of ruin for me is like that experience of going into a bookstore and knowing nothing about a book before you like pick it up like I look at the shelves and I'm like oh yeah I recognize that that I've seen people review that you know so like I kind of have some idea like if we're just like shopping like that um in a bookstore I definitely judge by the cover and or if I see an author I really like has blurbed the book that also definitely draws me in <laughs> well that's, that's kind of cool too yeah I mean that's the thing it's like we're always told from day one ish ish not to judge a book by the cover right but, but that rarely rarely ever happens <laughs> rarely ever happens so that's why it's like so important to have you know high quality covers that are correct to your theme that are correct to your genre that are correct to the age bracket or else um uh, you don't on the author side you don't do as well <laughs> yeah no, that's that is an investment worth having I know, yeah. Definitely worth it. Or break it, I think. But also, I have read books with, like, terrible covers that I still really like, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see your covers back there. They look really pretty, so. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it, depending on the time of day, some days they pop, and the other days they're, like, this black blur on some for some of them. But, yeah, I have, I love the two uh, cover designers that I worked with for all three of my series, <laughs> And they're fantastic. And I know eventually, just because trends change, I'll have to revamp them. And I keep trying to, like, figure out when I have to start revamping my first series. Hopefully not for another couple of years. I don't have the energy. <laughs> I don't have the energy. But, but, uh, but yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a fun thing to try to challenge yourself to figure out what is on trend. And I have a comment popping in saying, definitely, uh, talking about us, definitely think you two should do a podcast together, a book talk podcast. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Love it. Love the idea. But that's kind of fun. But yeah, yeah, so let me ask, I actually want to know this. For readers, and this is for anybody listening, for readers out there, if you get a book and you get something with the book, what do you want? Do you want a bookmark? Do you like character art? Do you like the candles. I've seen a lot of different things on this platform as like, you know, extra gifts or um, a merch, book merch or whatnot. And I just don't know what people truly enjoy. What could I invest in to make cool stuff for you guys? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, I really like cute little stickers with like the characters on them. 
though like especially if they're almost in like a little like cartoon of the character i just think those are so huh? cute stick that book and then it's adorable i don't know that's just me <laughs> but i mean I candles are good um but i feel like a lot of the times like they're not super high quality at least the ones that mm-hmm. i've got book boxes so it's kind of like if i'm gonna buy a candle i'd rather just like get like a bath and body works one or something gotcha. but that, I got that, because i'm very specific about that but <laughs> yeah i haven't invested in candles um at the moment i was actually looking at someone else here on book talk who makes bookish stuff like that and i was like should i do this and i'm like it would be interesting i haven't tried that before but i don't know my latest one now this is really nerdy i'm sorry this is like for those deep deep nerds out there um for my since i ran a kickstarter for the third book of the series my portal fantasy the jet chronicles and I had a bonus gift for certain levels and they came in last night. So I'm like super excited, but they're tiny little models. And I I know uh, you can't see like the details, but tiny little models of my main character and, and I'm going to hand paint them and send them out with like character subclass for people who play role playing. If you want to use it, great. If not, they're just so cute and you can just stick them on your bookshelf. When she's when she's that before either. I feel like that's a unique little like gift. (laughs) <laughs> and that's something yeah people will definitely just like stick it up on their shelf it'll be so cute i i think so i think so. we'll see i might actually regret this decision when i try to bring out because i had to buy specialty paint brushes that are like micros <laughs> for this. and i'm like oh my goodness um ooh, some comments popping up other book bookish things people like coffee or tree tea drinkers out there like mugs handwritten notes bookmarks I like an autograph copy. Of course, autograph copies. I was just curious. Just just fun stuff. Like, what do you like to get? It's just just a fun thing to ask because everybody likes different things. And I just am never sure what to s- send out to people. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is hard to like know. Because yeah, people like different stuff. So what was your favorite book you have read in 2022? Ooh, so okay, I... I- <laughs> quite a few I okay I read a crazy amount of books in 2022 like the most I've ever read in a year before my favorite one I had okay I'll give you like my top three because it's kind of hard so I really liked Priory of the Orange Tree I really loved Breaker by Brandon Sanderson um and then the whole City of Brass series the David Bond trilogy was so good oh my gosh so those were like my top three (laughs) Okay, I'm glad. I was like, those at least I've heard about and seen the covers. I have yet to read any of them. Seems yeah. so bad. <laughs> I read my book a thousand and two times. Yeah. No. That's... Yeah. No. I I do want to expand. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, it's probably so hard to like if you're writing to like get out of that headspace and then focus on a different world. I don't know. I feel like I would feel that way if I had to write. It's only hard because I'm publishing two series simultaneously because then I have to jump into other heads of totally different people. And so I have like allergies. So I'm going to blow my nose. Oh, go for it. <laughs> um, but point being is, yeah, switching from that to reading, it's not that hard. It's just finding the time. I do enjoy it. And I really do want to read some of these books that are talked about. I've heard like Priory of the Orange Tree um, is one that has been, you know, had a lot of chatter. I have not read a Brandon Sanderson. Ooh. Oh. I mean, I, I know have- Sanderson actually, and I really liked it. I was like not sure if I was gonna like it, but I did. So I haven't <laughs> I Stormlight Archives yet, though. That's like on the list to read this year, hopefully. That's good. Like, yeah, I, I feel like I should because he's so iconic at this p- moment, especially for people who. Um, for all different things. Like, I know he's um, rallying people on the audiobook community to change policies and what he did with Kickstarter. And really interesting. But I have not read a book. And I do. And I was curious, like, because he's written so many. Like, what do you start with? I mean, some people make videos of how yeah. you look through his books. And I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> there's so many. There are there's a lot. I started with Warbreaker, which I don't think most people do, but I was like, I'm not starting with a series. I need a standalone just to like dip my toes in the water. And I read that. And then I read the Mistborn trilogy, like the original one. There's like, but I like those two, not as much as Warbreaker, but I still thought they were really good. And I was like, okay, I'm going to read his books. <laughs> good. 
that's good. I mean, he is popular, and you you hope you're popular for a reason. And um, but yeah, I've heard a lot about Miss Born. I th- that's the name, right? Miss Born. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So bad. I see some comments popping up saying, "Oh, t-shirts, bookish t-shirts." Still talking about merch, stickers for phones and laptops. Yes. Love it. Love it. Um, Miss yeah, Miss Born Wheel of Time. Oh yeah, he also wrote Wheel of Time. Yeah. Part of it. Second, like, this last yeah. third or something. Yeah, he did a really good job with the ending, at least I thought. So, like, I feel like that would be so hard to pick up that series. And But I loved A Memory of Light. That was, like, that book made me, like, sob, like, crying, which I don't do that with. But, that, I mean, after 15 books, you're, like, so emotionally invested at that point. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm excited. I, I know, like I said, I'll have to go back and pick up book four, and it'll take me a moment, but... I guess that will be my first Brandon. That might be my first Brandon Sanderson if I get to the latter, the yes. last three books. Yeah. As, uh, <laughs> well, you have to get to book 12 before. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I like long series. It just takes me forever. So again, not the best person to do a reading club with. I will be the last one to read the book and it's not for lack of trying, but, um, but yeah, I think I like long series. I write longer series. I'm writing longer and longer series and I don't know when is a series too long? Can a series be too long? What do people think? I don't know. <laughs> I personally don't think so, but I also really like long series. Like, yeah. <laughs> Especially so, like yeah. in like series within the same world too. I feel like mm-hmm. I feel like That's it's like <laughs> yeah. Um, because I had I started picking up Bardugo Lay Lay Le- Le- Bardugo. And so, so I was, re- I read, you know, um, The Six of Crows, which I think that's my favorite one of hers at the moment, of the ones I've read. And I did the duology, and I, of course, did the Shadow and Bones trilogy um, last year, and did really like him. But she's one of those writers who writes within the same, her Grishaverse, her same universe that she develops in all the series so far, I think. I know she's released a couple, I guess, standalones or spinoffs or something. Yeah, there's like, like the Shadow and Bone... Then there's the Six of Crows, then there's King of Scars, and then there's like a couple like novellas in there, which I haven't actually read those because I, I have I'm not a novella person. But <laughs> don't look at yeah. the the bottom series because there are novella series. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> look up there. Yeah. No, I mean like I know I should read novellas. I just like I struggle with them if they're like not central to the plot i guess even though but if it's a series of novellas that's different but i mean more like when they write a whole series and then they come out with like a short story oh novel. yeah okay gotcha yeah about it for me <laughs> yeah i know for authors that that's a te- a technique a trick of being able to either expand on a sub character that maybe they hadn't before or some concept they wanted to play with or it also gives options of giving bonus gifts to people if if they're not actually publishing them. For me, I don't, I only do ebooks of my novellas until I get bundles of four and then have a print. So at least it looks thick and supposed to go on a bookshelf. <laughs> and it makes sense. And you can read through a series of four because they do, do flow pretty well into each other um, while having their little mini arcs. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Like the way. Yay. Yep. I know I should read them, but I just, <laughs> I always want to skip over them, which is bad, but. It's fine. It's fine. You don't have to. You can read what you want to read. No, you, no one should bully anybody else to reading something they don't want to read. Read That's what you want to read and leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask, um, I see a c- question here. I did not write anything for a Netflix series. I would love my stuff to be on a TV show or movie one day. We'll put that. But um, that reminds me, what is your favorite book turned something? Ooh. Movie? Game? Good question. Can you go? Is I, there one you like? Are they all horrible? <laughs> I actually think the Hunger Games adaptation did a pretty good job. Those mm-hmm. movies I liked when they came out. I feel like they stayed pretty true to the book. Um, other than that, I'm like, most of them are trash. But, you know. It's hard, it's hard to do a retelling. And that's what I was curious about because you never know. If someone wants to ask me, I'm like, well, did you do a quality one? Can you do a quality retelling? But yeah, I mean, for me, I I really liked Lord of the Rings, but I think it was all the original movies, the original movies, not the actual, I know they were cartoons. Ignore the cartoon movies. We're talking about, you know, um, Orlando Bloom and all that stuff. Yeah. But 
I enjoyed those books also because when I tried to read the books, they were over my head at that point. And I was like, it just helped me get it. And so um, I hope to go back and reread the books now that I'm a little older and maybe appreciate them more. And of course, that might change my opinion on the retelling part of it. But I did like those. Oh, but it's yeah. hard. It, it really is hard to do a retelling. I, I do love the Lord of the Rings movies as well. I think... Yeah, they definitely, like, because I also tried to read The Lord of the Rings when I was, like, 10 years old, which, you know, half of it didn't process. But because I had seen the movies, I think it helped, like, piece things together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I know there was a, there's always a lot more that goes on in the books. No, there is. That, that's just going to be the case, no matter what it is. But, um, yeah, I just, I like them. I was entertained. They, yeah. they, did, I, they did good for me. I don't know. <laughs> I watch them all the time. <laughs> I need to do a good rewatching. I want to do the extended, you know, director's cut or whatever they are and watch them. Um, I meant to do that, but life got in the way and I still need to go back to that and do that challenge and see them all the way through. <laughs> no, I actually recently watched the extended editions and yeah, it was, it was a good time. I watched it with a friend who had never seen any of the movies before. So it was fun to watch someone have like their very first like reaction to it. So. And that's dedication, too. That's a lot of hours. <laughs> yeah, 12 hours. I mean, we did it over, like, multiple evenings, but... Yeah, I've heard people do, like, movie marathons with them, and I'm just like, I can't sit down for 12 hours. Three, <laughs> three, three and a half? That That's probably as max as I can get, and that's still long, but before I need a break. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, it's a long time. I see someone mentioning talking about Stephen King. You can either write or read, um, but not everybody's Stephen King. That's true. Um, have you read any Stephen King's work? The only one I've read is It. I haven't read any Stephen King. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. I didn't know if I was going to like it or not, but it is very... The horror for me was very low-key compared to everybody's like, oh, it's so creepy. I'm like, it is? But at least the book was about so much more. It was like, just it was more about coming of age at least for the younger kid part but we will, but neither here nor there i have not read a lot of stephen king yeah i, I know that is an iconic one and, sorry i'm trying to skip go through go through go through all the okay catching up with comments but yeah um what is your favorite trope in a book oh okay i mean i do like a lot of like the classic thank you look at that <laughs> trope um but one very specific trope that i have like trouble getting rex for because the trope in itself is almost a spoiler is when the chosen one is not actually the chosen one that's like <laughs> that's like i really like that one but i can't get rex for it because i don't want to know that ahead of time if it's a spoiler <laughs> but i have read books like that and i can't wreck books like that either because i would spoil it for people so <laughs> You need like a uh, like a secret list somewhere where it's like you you know it's gonna ruin it for you, but if you really wanna know, um, but yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah, that I didn't think about that, but that is a trope, isn't it? Uh, chosen one, not being chosen one. And I love seeing stuff like that. I don't know if I've read a book with that. Again, need to read more, but definitely love that in any other, you know, media. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, definitely well fun one to write a favorite trope to write my favorite trope to write oh my goodness it's so funny because like the story i let tell themselves um and then i kind of go backwards and be like what did i add in so like i i'm not a romance forward writer i do more the action and the quest and battle scenes and uh, you know uh, i range from the more optimistic side all the way to the darker side of fantasy but i don't make romance a main thing but even still I had one that had a love triangle crop up and I was just like, I mean, that's tropey, but I, it was not really intentional. It was just in there. But I mean, I, I'm a sucker for, yeah, I'm a sucker for the chosen one idea. So I have a couple that have a little more of the chosen one vibe. And I'm also a sucker of is the character, and I don't know if this is a trope or just something else, but is the main character that, the I love when characters or the main character are not necessarily good or bad you just don't know which route they're gonna take and it could go either way so you could have a main character that ends up flipping to the villain side or you know the redemption maybe maybe in the end but i like i like that and i just 
it's not necessarily morally gray. It's the point is where they end up and the ones yeah. where you're like, you think they're the hero and then you realize maybe not, maybe not. And then yeah, it's there. Like, <laughs> especially when it's like that slow descent and you're like, Ooh. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I think, I think, oh God, no, this is so near. This is, this is back in the day. There was a, you may have seen it too. Um, the TV show Smallville. And oh, Lex Luthor's, Lex Luthor's um, um, fall from grace was like, I love that. And I was like, I want to write something like that one day. So I have this character in the back of my mind, not in any of the series I have right now, but one that I'm like, I have this character where it's like, I don't know yet if you're going to be the villain, but you're not going to be a good person. You're going to be like an anti-hero of some sorts at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, also, my phone is dying. Just FYI, no my, my charger. <laughs> I might. I just saw it's at ten percent, and it'll die real. I will be right back. No worries. Go for it. Go for it. Go so, anybody that. listening, what are your favorite tropes? Do you have tropes? Do you like tropes? Do you hope <laughs> want to read a book without tropes? Good luck. Um, let me know. Because, you know, there are so many out there, and so many ways you can categorize stories and subsects of stories and arcs and everything. It is interesting. There are definitely people who, and that's a sales technique for authors, if you're good at it, figuring out what tropes you have already in them, or if you write specifically to put them in, which I never do. I just hope, hope something land, <laughs> hits a mark for someone, and uh, don't do what I do. Try better, but, but I just, uh -huh. oh, I was just, I was just rambling about trying to see when authors ch have a choice of writing a trope in purposely in a story or writing a story and then kind of like me and like looking at backwards and being like, so what do I get out of it? <laughs> what is in there? That's true. <laughs> Ooh, nice map. Oh yeah. I had to move because my charger is not by the wall. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm jealous of all the bookshelves you have. <laughs> I live right now in a tiny apartment. I'm used to bigger homes. And so my books need, they're like in desperate need of having more space for themselves. Cause I have, book mounds and piles and pyramids everywhere yeah no i definitely am out of space i mean i guess i could get like taller bookshelves but i don't know i don't like we're renting so i don't want to like invest in like putting wall bookshelves so i understand but, so, i still like my setup <laughs> it's nice i like it i'm jealous yeah i have to split my book i'm renting too at the moment and one day i will buy the millennial, the curse of the millennial. You'll never, you'll never get a house, but, but one day I'll buy. Um, but yeah, so I want more bookshelves or bigger ones because all mine are shorter than me or at least kind of, you know, this height. So I want, you know, the massive room. I have like my whole vision of my future dream library. We have the big, you know, uh, wing chair and um, I have like... Sorry, I'm a scotch drinker, a glass of scotch, my giant Irish wolfhound, fire plate, you know, just ridiculous stuff. I, I, I dream about it. Do you ever dream about your dream library, book world, oh. book house? <laughs> yes. Um, when I was growing up, I had this friend who had this like, like it was like a door and you opened it and like it was like books. And then on the inside, there were more books. It was like the coolest thing ever. I loved hanging out there with her. So like, I want that. I mean, I don't know if that's super feasible, but that is the dream. <laughs> no, I've seen more and more houses use that secret hidden door thing. And um, depending on how you rig it, you know, I guess that's the question. Obviously, you want it to be in your own house so you can actually rig it, right? But I would love that. I would. I would totally do it. Or have something like hidden behind a tapestry and you open it up and it's a secret little little place. But but yeah, I would absolutely love it. And I see a question for me. And um, my books right now are distributed through Amazon, Kindle, Kindle Limited, um, Audible, iTunes, if, if they're the ones that are converted into audiobooks. That means, yes, they are distributed worldwide. It just depends, I guess, on your country and if, you know, um, what all their rules are, but they are they are distributed globally. As for signed copies, yeah, I can sign them globally as well. They just cost a little bit more for shipping. shipping. How many books are... Okay, here's a question. How many books are in your collection? Oh. <laughs> I just saw that one. I actually don't know. I, I am going to guess like around 300. 
It's actually not. I mean, it's like pretty decent, but like around there. I'm actually very proud of myself. I'm not one of those people that has like a giant physical TBR because that that stresses me out. I have only like 30 that I haven't read, which, (laughs) but I had a lot at one point and it like was like over a hundred and I was like, no, I can't do this anymore. I need to like get it down (laughs) just Mm because it's just too, like, I don't know, for me that like gave me anxiety, which I know shouldn't but <laughs> hey everybody everybody has your something and you know I and I understand I understand like for me I I try to I get like a bunch of books about twice a year it's like usually around Christmas or my birthday and those are my dump and then I start working through them again I'm slow can't stress a lot slow reader start working through them and um but anytime someone rec- recommends a book I'll put it on because Again, this platform taught me there are such things as Amazon wish lists, mm-hmm. and I'll dump it on the wish list. So that's a good way for me to look back when I do want new ones. And it'll be like, okay, time to get you, 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 you. And that way I'm not always buying the books so I don't forget them and living in. Well, I'm, I'm still living in mom's books, but yeah, no. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> it happened regardless. But yeah, so I'm assuming then, based on what you're saying, that your preference is ebooks, uh, not ebooks, physical print books. Or- Versus like ebooks or audio, because there are some people I know that will buy the physical for the pretty shelf, but read the ebook instead. Uh, yeah, I I like reading out of physical books mostly. I do have a Kindle, um, and like I've got done like Kindle Unlimited like free trial, but I haven't really like gone on to pay for it. I always just cancel it, and then they usually say like, "You want to continue for two more dollars a month?" <laughs> and I'll be like, "Sure." Um, I do really love audiobooks, though. A lot of the time, what I like to do is get the audiobook from the library and then have both an audio and go back and forth. That's, like, my favorite way to read. And then you read so fast, and it's satisfying. <laughs> I'm getting more and more warm to the idea of audiobooks for myself. Like, I totally support everybody who wants to read them. That's why I'm making that big push to convert all my stuff into audio over the next few years, try to catch up where I am. But... But yeah, I, I've never pictured myself as you, listening to audio or versus reading because I'm so used to just the physical copy of whatever it is. But I feel like I could get through a lot more books if I branched into audio because like I could be turning it on while I'm doing chores like washing dishes or something else that when I'm reading a book, you can't multitask more than that. <laughs> It is really nice for that. And I, I work from home, so I have a job where I can also listen to books during the day. And that that is key. So it's really nice because, like, I'll have, like, the audiobook that I'll listen to, like, during the day. And then in the evening, I'll, like, pick up the physical copy and, like, sit down and read. And that's how I get through books relatively quickly. <laughs> yes. No, I, it makes sense now. It's just I don't know why. I just never thought about it before. It was audio. Why should, I, why should I not, like, join the club? I don't know. I don't know. That's but, okay. uh, but, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of time to get used to it, I think. Like, when I first started, I had to, like, pay attention. But then over time, my brain, I feel like, kind of adjusted to it. And was I was able to, like, listen to it on faster speeds. At first, I was listening to it on, like, super slow. Because I was like, what? But eventually, it got better for me. So, yeah. No, I, I get that. I get that. And, like, for me, it's... While I'm converting everything, obviously I have to listen to all the files and approve them or make edits, just like any formatting of a book. And um, but it's a lot of fun. All of a sudden, you're like, "Oh, my characters are coming to life!" Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I like this. And so I'm like, now I'm like, "Ooh, I get it now. It makes sense." I don't know. It, is, it took me too long. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it's nice. I really like when I'm rereading books to do the audio if I didn't do it the first time around because it kind of makes it feel like a little bit of a different experience you know it's like yeah it's kind of nice for that and depending on the the book there are some that do the sound effects or you know multicast or whatever so they can really make it come alive which is those are really and like I I was gonna say I've I've enjoyed recently you know getting into the old old like really old um horror shows that you they did they made them for the radio way back and been listening those on long car rides and i'm like what is stopping me from audiobooks i don't understand this is like the step before let's do this so i'll I'll probably be converting a little bit i will always want my physical copies of books no matter what but yeah i still physical too 
that's why yeah the Libby app if you can get access to that where you live it's like amazing for me <laughs> uh, expensive like if you want to buy them and like uh, Audible, not I mean like it's okay like you can get like one book a month and I know there are other like similar subscription services but I don't really like subscription method for audiobooks like I just want to like buy the ones I want and not have to wait every month I don't know <laughs> and I say and yeah I totally get that you know you again you want to read what you want to read when you want to read it I get it I get it do you consider yourself a mood reader um yeah I think so I'm not like I usually do kind of stick to one book at a time or like usually it's like one physical maybe one ebook or audiobook so like one or two but I don't like put down a book because I'm in a different mood and like pick up a different one so like mood reader when it comes to like choosing the book but not yeah, okay. does that make sense I don't know <laughs> yeah oh yeah I'm definitely a completionist when it comes to reading a book even if it's a book that I'm kind of dragging on I will read it I will finish it it will be read it's gonna happen but but then I might not pick up another one <laughs> that series so i understand that i understand that so we're actually rounding the hour already so let me oh i was gonna ask you one more thing i'm trying to think what it was oh so if you could recommend one book to to a stranger to your best friend whoever like what is one book you would recommend that you think as many people should read in the world oof that's a hard one because like <laughs> you know people don't always like the same thing um that's true that's true I understand. But with that understood, what one would you recommend? I mean, one book that I kind of always want to get everyone to read is Lord of the Rings. But I also know that that's not going to be for everyone. But like, I feel like it's like most people, even who don't really like fantasy, might still like that because it's like such a big thing in our culture. Um, yes. And Tolkien was the, one of the, what I, I say most, a lot, la, 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 la. I say a lot is he's one of the forefathers of what we consider modern fantasy. Um, the way he, you know, took Nordic myth, repurposed it, came out with his stories, told these fantastical tales, and everybody now, we even go back to his terminology a lot, orcs and, you know, hobbits yeah. and stuff. We refer, you know, we refer to things that, you know, terminology that he was kind of coming up and manufacturing and evolving in his own way. So that's kind of cool. It's a good but, choice. Good choice. But if I'm going to, like, go off of, like, what I want people to read, it would probably be Priory of the Orange Tree. <laughs> okay. Now I have to put this. I have to make sure it's on my wish list be tonight. Before I go to bed or else I'm going to forget about it. Priory of the Orange Tree, um, it needs to be added on my wish list because I have not read that one. And have heard a lot of good things about it. But, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> So let me ask, uh, since we are towards the end and I'm pro I am probably have to tap out and switch to some other things, <laughs> the life of an indie author always working. But with that said, is there anything that you want um, viewers to know about you, you know, your your book talk platform, whatnot? I mean, I reading and talking about fantasy books with people. So I always love it when people comment on videos if I've like, if they've also read the book and hearing their thoughts. I mean, I mostly just came on here because I don't have anyone in real life that like likes to read, you know, the kind of similar books that I do. So mostly here for like the interaction with okay. people. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, fantasy book talk. Yes. <laughs> I need I need some I need some like um fantasy hashtags. I never know which ones to use. And I always do the epic fantasy or all my subgenres, but I don't know. Is fantasy book talk a good hashtag? Like, what do you use when you I, add hashtags? I usually just do like fantasy books, fantasy book talk, or like, and then even though I notice whenever I use like book review, the video like tanks, which is so annoying that book reviews don't actually do that well, but I still make them anyway because that's like what I like to do. But yeah, I do like there's a fantasy book talk hashtag. I use that one pretty regularly. <laughs> Fantastic. No, I, I agree. It's so much fun to be able to find someone who's read something that you enjoy and just talk with them about whatever it is. Because for me, um, I love, I would love that. It's like, I would, let's talk books again. I need to read more so I can catch up to everybody else's chatter. And that's why I don't talk in a lot of book talk chats because they're talking about books like uh throne of glass or a priority orange tree. And I'm like, or Akatar. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not there yet. Give, give me a little while. <laughs> well, that's okay, though. I mean, I still like talking to people even if they haven't read it because it's like they still, you know, can be like, well, I like this book. Maybe you should try that out, you know. <laughs> yeah, I love those videos because 
you know, if you found, finally found a book that you're obsessed about, but you don't know, you want to find something similar. Again, this is a great platform where you either ask the question and be like, hey, I think I should do some of those. Be like, hey, if you read this book, what other, what would be your next rec that's close to it? That's a, that's, that's a good idea. Oh, great. <laughs> but thank you for coming out and chit-chatting with me. I've been wanting to meet you for a while and I've been following your feed for, I don't know, probably close to the beginning since I joined this platform when I was trying to get into the book talk community and fantasy talk and all that fun stuff. <laughs> I mean, this was really fun. I really enjoyed talking. <laughs> Yay! And then, you know, if you ever want to do this again, just let me know. I do them weekly. And um, but yeah. And I will have to be tapping out because between my allergy medicine needing a re another dose and I, I hit an hour and then my voice gets scratchy. So I can also tell you that. I'll admit that. I'll be honest about that too. <laughs> but with that said, thank you so much again. And I hope we'll keep in touch going forward. Definitely. Have a great evening. And thank you for everybody watching. Bye. Thank you all.